New Mexico State wins the toss and elects to take the football as the Gamecocks will defend the south end zone to start the 2000 season. Jason Course to do the kicking duties for Carolina. And we're underway. Corey Paul for New Mexico State takes the ball about the five-yard line, and he is hit hard by Rashad Faison, taking the ball up to the 28-yard line. Great coverage from there by Rashad Faison. Lee Hulk's got to be pleased with that. All right, Ensminger, the left-hander for New Mexico State, fires out to the outside for a quick pick up there, but Rashad Faison again all over it. Faison, I tell you, was a freshman SEC candidate last year, played very well and starting the season off again doing it that way. There's our starting lineups, including that solid middle of Caldwell and Pinkney. And there's the secondary. Now, Antoine Neesmith was a scratch after getting injured in the pregame warm-ups, pulling a muscle in his back. So he'll be replaced by 35, Andre Goodman. Second play from scrimmage here, and it's up the middle. Brandstetter rushes for four yards. That'll put the ball on the 35-yard line and Cleveland Pinckney on the tackle. There's your Aggie offensive line. Hancock, a returning all-conference player. And Ensminger, the left-hander, threw for more than 1,800 yards last year and rushed for just about 400 yards. Oh, a fumble on the play. It looks like it's recovered by South Carolina. Cleveland Pinckney comes up with it. The referee is signaling it's Carolina football, but... There's another flag on the play, Todd. Yeah, I believe that... New Mexico State will be called with illegal procedure, which of course would be a dead ball foul. There's Tony Samuel, third year at New Mexico State. So the New Mexico State Aggies stay alive. Ensminger now, play action pass. Down across the middle, complete to his tight end. That's Davis. Davis filling in for McCrary, who was left back in Las Cruces. Here's the option play, first time for the Aggies. It's shut down to the left side. Kalimba Edwards doing a nice job there, stopping the option for the first time. Kalimba Edwards kind of filling that role uh, left by John Abraham, who was a first-round pick to the New York Jets. And uh, this guy can be a special player, Todd. I tell you, he's got size, range, and uh, he can run. That'll bring up second nine now on the 48-yard line. High formation. Pitch play to the right side to Barnes, Chris Barnes. Down the field for a nice pickup there. A little misdirection by the Aggies. That's a play everybody's using, Todd. Even in the NFL, they take the dive the opposite way and pitch to your right there. So try to get the linebacks to over pursue. Second down and eight now on the 33-yard line. And Barnes again up the middle. Chris Barnes on the carry. Barnes is 6'1", 210 pound back. He rushed for 516 yards a year ago. Ensminger back to pass now across the middle again and the pass is caught by Alex Davis for nine yards. It's a first down for the Aggies. The Aggies are working in the middle of the field attacking the game caught linebackers there. And here's the 3-5 defense for the first time for South Carolina. Ensminger on the dive play again. Phil Brandster breaking up the middle. And Andre Goodman has to come up with a stop there. And you stated it, Corey. They're attacking the middle of the defense, which is supposed to be the Carolina strength. There's Barnes again. He's not that big, only 210 pounds, but he's got enough to run inside to pick up nine yards down there. Second down and eight. Ensminger rolling out right. Now crossing back across the field. And Kenny Harney on pursuit, and Caldwell finishes him up. It's a sack by Carolina, and boy, that's a big play. Sack for 18 yards. It's great pursuit, as you can see here in the replay. This is a misdirection boot play, uh, which you don't see too often. Uh, he got time there, but you got great pursuit here by Kearney, right here by the linebacker. He misses the tackle, but uh, Caldwell comes in here and finishes up the dirty laundry. So great pursuit, great play in the red zone by the Carolina defense. Yeah, they were on the 11-yard line at that point. Now they back them way up, third down and 26 on the 27-yard line. Play action again by Ensminger. Goes to the post route and knocked down incomplete. Great play, great play. Sheldon Brown, what a play. That's big. That's two big plays by the Carolina defense, and that's why they were ranked 20th last year on defense and look to be better than that this year, Ty. Sheldon Brown... 
tied for the team in interceptions <laughs> last year. Boy, that's ugly. That's some ugly bodies there, I tell you. <laughs> All right, here's the field goal attempt by New Mexico State. 43 yards, and it is wide and left. No good. So that's 12 plays and 45 yards. They make penetration down in the Gamecock territory, but New Mexico State comes up empty. Gamecocks hold up there, you know, kind of bend but don't break type of defense. They gave us some plays, but but came up big there in the red zone. That's where you need to be good. No points. All right, we get our first look at the new offense of Carolina led by Phil Petty. First down and 10 on the 27. And they go to the big back right away. Andrew Pennant. Pennant. The power back out of Connecticut. I tell you, he reminds me of the bust, Jerome Pettis, I tell you. You know, Toddy say he lost 15 pounds down to 245. Now. Yeah, it's really helped him his acceleration and I think probably his endurance over these long games. Second down and four now. Petty under center. High formation. They go back to Pennant. Nice block by Travis Lewis. And Pennant gets a nice pickup game there. Two yards. It's on the South Carolina 35-yard line now. So third down and two. Let's see what Skip Holtz comes up with on offense here, whether he goes to his jumbo package or... No, he'll stay in the spread. Three receivers to the right. Jamal Kelly by himself to the left. There's Lou Holtz. Lou looking pretty calm right now. Ty. I assure you he was not looking that way in the locker room prior to the ball game. He was intense <laughs> just like everybody else. Third down and two here. Petty back to the pass. Little hitch route to Jamal Kelly and fumbles it, but he comes up with a catch there. And boy, they need him to play well this year. I tell you, Jam Jamal Kelly is a big time play receiver, chasing some of Sterling Sharp records, so you know uh, that's tough to do, but they look forward to the, uh, Kelly having a big year for the Gamecocks. That brings up a first and 10 now for the Gamecocks. Gamecocks coming out in a no huddle offense. Everybody expected the spread, but not necessarily the fact they'd be calling the plays from the line of scrimmage. So. This is a good switch up, I think, for the Gamecocks. Phil Petty dropped the pass, feel a little pressure. Goal to the outside. He's got some running room, and Phil does not take a dive. He goes out there and picks up nine yards on the play before being burned by Dwayne Taylor. I tell you, Phil there kind of shocked me there, Todd. He got some wheels on him, a big guy. A little juke move, got on the outside, picked up you know, seven, eight, nine yards. Making that first guy miss is so important for a quarterback. Bill's got 4-6 speed. Second down and one. Panic again from the I formation. Another good block by Travis Lewis. And they get what they need on second down. Pick up that first down. Panic off the left tackle right there. Good block by your tackle. Get three yards down the carry. They cross the 50-yard line now in the Mexico State Territory. First down and 10. Again, you'll see Coach Lou Holtz on the sideline. Skip Holtz calls the plays, sends them down to Todd Fitch, the receiver coach, who then signals in the groupings and the plays to go into Phil Petty, who has the opportunity at the line of scrimmage to make the call. High formation again. Petty, play action. Across the middle to Thomas Ooh. Hill. Oh, that is not good. When you're a converted defensive end and getting your first... Start first over there, tight end, <laughs> drop oh, the first pass. That's a good way, Todd, to get moved right back over to defensive <laughs> line. I tell you, that, that's a catch you have to make. Good play action fake there by Petty, and he's wide open, and he dropped the ball. So I can tell you, Big, big Lou Holtz will have some words for him. Well, they like Thomas Hill. They say he's been very physical in the running game, and he'll just he'll get used to that. Second down and 10 now on the 46-yard line. Trips to the right. Petty in the gun, rolls right, now throws back to left to Jamal Kelly. They set up the wide receiver screen, and Kelly's got some room across the 30-yard line and down to the 14-yard line. South Carolina with a big play on the wide receiver screen, but hold on. Like another flag. Yeah. Looked like some big against the game, Scott. Yeah, I believe Corey Alexander there as we look at the play. Look at this, Todd. you got a sprint rollout here by Petty. And when he tricks the defense, you can see all the defensive linemen of the Aggies rolling to his left, throws it out to Kelly. Kelly with great run right here. Makes a good move here. Makes a guy miss. Picks up a few extra yards. But guess what? He's coming back. This is the type of thing, as you can see, that just drives the head coach crazy. This is what happened to the Gamecocks last year, getting down into scoring territory and 
having problems. All right, that's going to move it to second and 15 now on the South Carolina 49-yard line. Bill Petty, only a 44% completion percentage last year, and he's thrown some strikes on this drive so far. Spread offense again. Quick drop. Ball to the outside. Oh, and James Adkinson drops the out route there. Adkinson, the, the giant junior college transfer where he was an All-American, caught 59 passes there, but drops that one. So that's going to bring up third and 15 from the South Carolina 49-yard line. Petty back to pass. Throws the corner route to Jamal Kelly, and a beautiful catch and throw. That's the way you draw it up in practice right there. Great timing. Jamal Kelly there. Guy caught 14 touchdown passes two years ago, and then only got one last year. So they made some big plays from Kelly, and he comes up with one there. You can see here Kelly runs a great route in the shotgun spread offense. Great throw by Petty here. That's what I tell you. That's uh, that's textbook there, Todd. Just enough time to get his feet down and get inside for the first down. So now we've got first and ten on the 32-yard line. Took away that penalty there, and Pennick back in the ball game. Spread formation again, and he'll get it on the draw play out to the right side. He moves the pile again a little bit further. Further rushes four yards down to the New Mexico State 28-yard line. That's Offside penalty there. Offside penalty, so that's going to push it down even further. It's Phil Petty now back in the shotgun. Trips to the left. Sprints left, now throws back right to receiver screen again. Misses to Atkinson this time, and he takes those long legs of his and gets down the field there. They're set up nicely that time by Melvin Page's block to the outside. Skip Holt saying something he liked. He went to that play earlier with Jamal Kelly. Now he comes back here with accident rolling the opposite way. He so, said good block out here by the tackle. So hard to defend, Corey, isn't it? I mean, you just have to stretch the field that way, and the linebacker's got to get out there, and it's just a difficult play to defend. It's tough, but it's even tough on the offensive lineman. they got to be able to move the goddamn block a smaller, right. quicker guy. All right, that takes us to first and 10 now on the 11-yard line for Carolina. They're in striking distance. Derek Watson in the game now. Petty with a quick drop, throws a slant play. That ball is knocked down to Dwayne Taylor there. Trying to go to the backside of that route to get a quick score. You can see here, Todd, even though this is somewhat of a no-huddle offense, it really isn't a quick no-huddle offense like you saw with, with the Buffalo Bills and Jim Kelly. You know, the defense still has time to get different personnel onto the field, so it really, really doesn't put a lot of pressure on the defense. So. Uh, but still, I like the attack by the Gamecocks. Second down and 10 now. Single back formation. Petty to Derek Watson on the slant play. A loose one. Derek is awfully loose, used to last year having to make that move in the backfield. And he eluded the first tackler there for a three yard gain down to the eight yard line. Trips right. Oh, that looked like offsides there. Petty getting sacked. And they are offsides. There is a flag on the play. Yeah, the defensive line there for the Aggies got a little quick there. Not watching that football. If there's one advantage to that no huddle offense, it's probably that, that those defensive linemen don't know when to get down in their stance. They're antsy about getting into the play, and it makes it difficult for them. It really does, and I think it gets them winded. You know, they don't have the time to go back in the huddle, get out the huddle, and concentrate. They still have to focus on the game cost because they don't know if they're going to snap the ball quick or are they going to call their play out like they've been doing in the past? All right, now inside the five-yard line. Fourth down. Looks like Carolina's bringing in their jumbo unit, their big boys. Lewis, the fullback. Pennick, the tailback. Off the right side, Pinnock driving, driving, touchdown, Andrew Pinnock, Carolina scores. I tell you, Todd, that's just pure heart and effort on that play. There it is. That's why I call that guy the bus. I mean, you can see the power in his legs. I mean, he gets hit by the two-yard line, and he just drives on in the end zone. That's a great run by 
a Pinnock and a great blocking job by the offensive line. Yeah, that was from the four-yard line, but they chose to go with the jumbo unit, and they get the touchdown. That's 6 nothing now, Carolina. That drive was 13 plays, 73 yards, and took off five minutes and 55 seconds now. Tyler Dean into kick, uh -oh. and oh, no, that is a... Uh, well, there's a guy who... Who hadn't kicked in a couple of weeks, you can tell there. So they missed the extra point as we look at Pinnock again. Look at the power, Todd. Just drive, drive. That's just nothing but heart and desire. And Lou Holtz got to be pleased with the effort of, of Pinnock. Yeah, a very nice drive there. Pinnock and Watson going to make a great combination of backs with different skills for Carolina this year. So there we have it. 6 nothing Carolina over New Mexico State. They pull off a nice drive, 13 plays, 73 yards and take five minutes and 55 seconds off the clock. Jason Kors now to back on the field to kick off for Carolina. We that's P.J. Winston is gonna return this ball. Marco Hutchinson on the tackle there is. Again, the game caught for great coverage on the kickoff. Marco's a guy who's used in a lot of different roles for Carolina. They bring the ball up to the 25 yard line, so Ensminger will try to get his Aggies Back on course here. First and ten. Motion by the tight end. Cross the formation. Play action pass. Rolling out left. Throws to the outside. Randstetter picks up just a few yards. Actually, no gain on that time. Now, Ensminger back with the option play to the left side. And the first time tonight, we've seen it be a little bit of effective. Well, I'll tell you, that's why that guy rushed for 1,000 yards last year, Todd. He's a great quarterback, good skills there. And the option is one of the hardest offenses to stop. Barnes comes now back up the middle. New Mexico State starts to pick up some yards in a hurry here. I'm kind of shocked they run up the middle like that, Ben, with the big two tackles that the Gamecock have. At nine yards on that play. It's second down and one, and oh, not going to get much there now. Aggies trying to run up the middle again, but this time they stopped. No gain by Kenny Harney and Andre Offering making a great tackle here. Take a look at this, Corey. You see here, the linebacker comes in, takes on the block, the correct shoulder falls off, and makes the tackle along with the host of the other Gamecocks. I'll tell you, that's great play by a linebacker right there, Harney. Very nice technique. Third and one now on the 41-yard line. Carolina stacking it up on the defensive line there. Ansminger down the left side. Stopped by Stamper and then wrapped up completely now after he tried the option to the left side. And Tony Samuel is used to his eye back picking up a little bit more yards than that. Now the all-conference punter for New Mexico State comes on and shows why he's an all-conference kicker. Great punt. Down Great going to the four-yard line for Carolina. So it's still 6-0 Carolina with one minute and three seconds to go in the first quarter. Petty starting well inside into his territory in the I formation and he goes to Andrew Pinnock on the play. <laughs> straight dive there. He's trying to run for more yards. Only Andrew Pinnock can come up with three yards from nothing there. <laughs> We've got second and seven now. They stay in the I formation deep down in their territory. There's Watson to the outside. Lewis leading. He finds a little seam there. Derek Watson doing a nice job staying alive, really, more than anything else on that play. He rushes for six yards. Tell you, now they run Pinnock up the middle. Now you switch up and you bring Watson in there and you attack the outside of the defense and uh, picks up about six yards there on the carry. Phil Petty showing his coaching staff on the sideline how far they've got to go. We've got it down for a third and one now. South Carolina 14-yard line. They got the jumbo set in. Isolation. Oh, Derek Watson is stopped. Well, I can hear those pads popping from up here. Yep. Derek Watson is stopped for no gain on the play as they collapsed everyone in downside, but the safety Malloy came up and made a stop. He, it shows why he is an outstanding all-conference player for New Mexico State. Well, I'm kind of surprised, Todd. They didn't bring Pinnock in the game third and short. You know, him been a short yard type of back. You know, I would think they would have run Pinnock in that situation. He's picked up a yard in every other situation they needed there. So that was three plays, nine yards, and that's the end of our first quarter. 
Here's our stats, and not too much difference between these two ball clubs except for the score, and that was that one drive of 73 yards by Carolina. Pretty even, I tell you. Uh, it, uh, they ran the football pretty well. Show your support for Carolina football on South Carolina ETV by making a call and making a pledge to the ETV endowment. 1-800-256-8535 or 256-0222. As we start our second quarter, this will be a fourth and one situation here. Certainly the Gamecocks are going to punt. Again, Tyler Dean coming on to punt for Carolina. Suffering from back spasms the last two weeks. Has had limited work there. They worked even Ryan Brewer, Mr. Versatile, Mr. Football from Ohio at the punting game. And I tell you what, it was not pretty at the practice I was out there at, Corey. Ryan is a versatile athlete, but... Uh, the more you can do, Todd, the more you can do. <laughs> that's right. He's going to make sure he gets his place on that Somewhere. traveling squad. All right, fourth and one here. Gamecocks to punt. Dean, not a good punt, not, not one of his best showings. He kicks it off the right side of his foot, and just like the field goal, it looked like he hurried it there a little bit. It only picks up 21 yards, so now a big advantage for the Aggies. They have an opportunity here to get back into this ball game in the second quarter. It's Carolina great. leads 6 to nothing. Great field position here by the Aggies, and they got, they got to take advantage of this uh, field position, especially when you're on the road. This is the type of situation you want to be in. First and 10 for Ensminger now on the 35-yard line. Two tight ends this time. Quick pass to the outside and incomplete. Sheldon Brown all over it again. The hitch route's not going to work in that situation. It's been good for Carolina, but the Aggies can't make it work. Not so good for the Aggies. I'll tell you, the Gamecocks are pursuing to the football. Second down and 10 now, Ensminger. Under center, another quick drop. Off his back foot, throws the ball, incomplete. Looked like he wanted to throw to Talbert across the middle on the slant, but fine coverage again there by Andre Goodman. Three incompletions in a row, forced by the South Carolina defense. Third and 10. Yeah, are they gonna call that a catch or not? Like it's incomplete, Ty. Yeah, incomplete there. So Winston couldn't hang on across the middle where Ensminger has been exploiting it. I'm surprised that they threw the ball three times in a row right down here in the red zone. And being that, uh, you know, they got a lot of their playbook from the Nebraska Cornhuskers, I would think they'd probably run the option down here. Yeah, that power eye not working for them so far. And have a 42-yard field goal attempt by Aguanina of New Mexico State. And that ball is going to fall well short and right. So the Gamecocks again escape bad kicking game. Tony Samuel comes up short. I'll tell you, both teams, especially teams, are not looking too pleasant at this point. Well, Carolina certainly has got to get a lot better if they're going to fare well in the SEC matchups during the year at the kicking game. First and ten now for Phil Petty as he barks out the play in the formation for his teammates on the South Carolina 27-yard line. Motion by Brewer across the formation. Petty rolling left, throwing back right. And this is Atkinson again on the receiver screen, and they make the most of it. I tell you, I like the play calling my Skip Holtz at this time. I mean, he's using, I think, the greatest weapons are their receivers on this team. And uh, big guys, remind me of Sterling Sharp and Ryan Mathay, big guys who can run the football. Again, that's the third time they've run that play. Nice play there. they got a ways to go to get to Sterling, though. 72 catches in a year <laughs> Sterling Sharp had. But we've got some guys out there who got the skills. First and 10 now in the 42. That's Derek Watson on the rush. And Derek Watson breaking it to the outside, putting together a nice Derek run. Watson, 24 yards on the carry, and Derek's excited. He ought to be. I mean, Mr. South Carolina football here, you can see here, just a draw play out of spread offense. Starts to the left. Look at the feet work. Footwork, I'm sorry. Makes a great move. Another good move there. Gets on the outside. And look who's downfield, Todd. Did you ever block <laughs> like that, Todd, when you played? 
I tell you what, I had maybe one or two in my days. Harold Green got the benefit of one block one time, but that was the last time. <laughs> it hurt too much. All right, that brings up a first and ten now on the 34-yard line. Carolina gets a nice run out of Derek Watson. They go back to the spread again. Two receivers, both sides. Petty in the gun. Quick drop again. He's going to go deep down the left sideline. He's got Brian Scott out there, but it's incomplete. So a little too far outside that outside shoulder there. Yeah, Petty kind of floated that ball. I mean, if he wanted to complete that pass, he had to zip that thing in there because the safety was coming over the top. Petty has been on the mark so far this evening, with the exception of a few drops. He yeah. has been solid in running this offense. He has been playing well. I'm, I'm uh, excited about Phil Petty. Second down and 10 now in the 34. See him getting the signals from the sidelines from Todd Fitch, Watson in the backfield. Quick drop again, and they go to the hitch route, and it's Kelly to the outside there. And I tell you what, Kelly getting all due respect from the New Mexico State secondaries. He had all kinds of room to pull in that hitch route there. Picks up 12 yards. Well, I think the game cost is really concentrating on that short passing game, getting that ball to the receivers and let them make plays and uh, really not making it too difficult right now for Phil Petty. Nor that offensive line who gave up 40 offsides, obviously, there by New Mexico State, unless we drew them offsides. Gamecock offensive line gave up 47 sacks a year ago. See the coach there saying, what, what? <laughs> Can't be on us. Can't be. <laughs> All right, so Phil Petty back up in the lineup now. The spread offense, two receivers each side. He drops back. He's going to scramble across the line of scrimmage. Makes a move to the outside and another nice pick up there. I tell you, he sat in the pocket, felt the pressure, and uh, pulled it down and ran with it. Good run there by Phil Petty. Looked like another penalty. Yep. Holding on the defense in that play. That'll push us inside the 10 yard line, and we'll have first and goal on the 7 yard line. Let's see what Skip Holtz comes up with now. Trips to the left side. Spread offense again. Looks like Petty could be changing it out. He comes out from under center and goes to the gun. Slips Derek out to the right side here. And it won't be the pass. It'll be Derek Watson on the draw play. And oh! Down to the one-yard line. Derek Washington, Watson rushes for six yards down to the one on a first-and-goal situation. We spread them out with trips to the left, another receiver to the right, and run the draw play. That's tough, isn't it, Corey, to it's, try to stop that? It's very tough. Anytime you run that spread offense, you get guys out the box, you got to walk linebackers out, or you get a safety in there who's got to be walked out, and it really opens up the middle. If you block those two inside tackles, you got to lane up the middle. As you can see, Watson runs for a good six yards right there down to the one-yard line. Gives Derek Watson a back like him just the ability to pick and choose the hole that he wants. And it's uh, usually a game. All right, now, on the one-yard line, jumbo offense in. Uh-oh. Yep. Like another one of those yellow things. Oh, this will thrill Coach Lou Holtz. I'll stand on there at that point in time, Todd, and I can hear Lou, Lou saying, who is the call on? Who is the call on? He yeah. wasn't concerned about anything else. <laughs> It's not like the NFL, is it, where they call those numbers out? No. You know, everybody in the stadium knows who, <laughs> who is committed. All right, now we got second down and goal after the illegal procedure penalty. Petty goes to the gun on the five-yard line. Oh, and Melvin Page, of all people. Second time you get the false start, and uh, Todd, I tell you, this really kills a drive. Penalties really kill a drive. I mean, you're down to one yard line, now you're back 10 more yards, and it makes it very difficult. It's hard enough to call plays in this area and come up with something unique to score. See here, Page has been, re been replaced, so you know what Lou's thinking. He's thinking he's going to remember that. He's not going to do it again. That's correct. All right. Second down and goal now on the 10-yard line. Derek Watson, Ryan Brewer on the reverse play. Phil Petty with a block. Brewer gets down to the, is it score? 
No, he does not get in. He does not get in, so Skip Holtz coming up with a reverse play down in the red zone. I tell you, he's, he's bringing everything out that playbook. You can see here, spread offense, run that draw again, but this time they bring Brewer around for the reverse. Brewer was a running back last year, Ty, was converted to wide receiver, and I think the game costs are trying to use him in, in different types of situations to give him the football. Yeah, he has uh, been known to sub for Derek Watson in this offense, play the slot, return kicks. Reminds me of Rudy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, Derek Watson for the score. A one-yard leap by Derek Watson, who scores his first touchdown of his collegiate career after scoring 48 touchdowns in high school and senior year. He finally gets on the scoreboard here. Well, you got to be happy for Derek Watson. This is a guy that they really have high hopes for, and, and I hope that you know, he got his head on right. And I tell you, this guy can have a future on Sundays playing an NFL time. Well, he's the only guy that can stop Derek Watson. Derek Watson's the only guy. You're right. Not surprisingly now, they're going to go for two as Carolina missed the extra point to start the scoring in this ball game. Petty will take it to the left hash as they get to choose. He'll bring his back to the right, so we've got four receivers, potential receivers, to the right side now. In the gun, Carlos Spikes comes in motion across the hash. Petty looking to the right side. Going to go back to the left side. Here. Kelly touched Ooh. it. Yeah, they get the extra point. Kelly gets the extra point. It is 14 to nothing, Carolina, on a beautifully executed two-point play. Phil hey. Petty looking from right to left there, Corey. Skip, Skip Holtz has really done a marvelous job, I tell you, of play calling here. You can see here they go in the spread formation. Again, trips to one side. Kelly's isolated on the left, most to the bunch formation, and hits Kelly on the loop. Uh, out pattern there on the left side for the two-point conversion. Great play calling by Skip Holtz. Nine plays, 73 yards, three minutes and 51 seconds off the clock, and Carolina leads 14 to nothing. We said earlier that they need a victory. They didn't care who they were playing. They needed to get a win, and they on their way. I tell you, they started out, out very hot. Well, as you stated, not exactly conservative play calling by any means. I mean, they, they're using every part of their playbook so far to make sure they get the Aggies in this opening ball game. Force again to kick off now. Force winning the kickoff duties this year. It's a pretty good job of knocking it down there towards the goal line most of the time. That's candidate on the return for New Mexico State. He's got to see him up the middle, fumbles the oh. football but is recovered, I believe, by New Mexico State. So another potential disaster for one of these football teams on the special teams that New Mexico State holds on now. I think next week both teams, that's one area that they will be concentrating on. That's going to be special teams. So surprising. They work on it so much during the preseason. Ensminger back in now, goes to his fullback, Randstetter, up the middle, rushes for three yards on that play down to the... 34-yard line, Cleveland Pinckney. Pinckney from Sumter, South Carolina. <laughs> they tell him that this guy's supposed to be the jokester of the team. Well, I have never met a man who was uh, afraid to, not afraid to talk as much as Cleveland Pinckney. I think he talks to the refs, offensive <laughs> line, his coaching staff. Ensminger now play action, goes to the outside. The ball is complete to Talbert out there. A little comeback route. Nice play by New Mexico State. Such a little play action fake up the middle. Nice throw and catch. Seemed like the game cost playing off right there. It's on Pick, coverage. Picked up 12 yards there. First and 10 now. And all of a sudden, New Mexico State is quickly into getting close to Gamecock territory. Slot to the right, I formation. Ensminger there. Up the middle to Kenton Keith. Kenton Keith out of Omaha, Nebraska. 5'11", 180 pounds. He's been fighting with Barnes for that starting tailback position. Andre Goodman on the stop. Andre Goodman's had some stops in this first half so far. Really having a fine ball game. Second down and seven now. There's the 3-5 defense. We heard a lot about in the spring. Weren't sure we were going to see or not. You see Sean Blissman checking off at the line of scrimmage here. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh my God. Willie really offered now. Picks the pass off. What a play by our outside linebacker, Willie Alford. Willie Alford, I tell you, it was a great play. I just wonder if he's going to go the wrong way there for a minute. Yeah, well, you get the <laughs> check off. Willie Alford jumping up. He's only about four yards from the line of scrimmage, and the 
I tell you, I just don't see what Ensminger is looking at right here, Todd. I mean, he, this guy's got two guys, not one, but two guys on him. Yep. And uh, can't be happy with that throw. He throws right into coverage here. He's got the little three-step drop. He's trying to throw the slant, but you're right, Corey. Two, I was wrong. They got three guys. <laughs> Todd. <laughs> so Carolina getting a pick in their opening right. ball game after waiting for the sixth game of the season last year to get a... INT really offered doing a nice job. So Carolina takes over now on the 45 yard line. Phil Petty takes them back to action. 8.06 to go in the half. Oh, mm -mm. can't get that one off. So Phil Petty got to take the timeout. Rolling well, talked to Coach Holtz and I guess he didn't. Time was running down on him there. But that only happens to you one time, and I think that's a cocky imitator there. I don't believe that's our guy. That only happens to you one time in the opening ball game. You're doing pretty good on an offensive football team. That's correct. Freddie gets back under center now. Gets into the shotgun. Looks to the outside. Throws to the outside to Carlos Spikes. That's eight yards on the reception there. I tell you, this is just, again, uh, great job of calling plays here the short passing game moving the ball down the field and uh, mixing those plays up i think uh, skip host doing a great job spread formation looks like a blitz they go to Derek watson Derek eludes one defender gets to the outside and shows a burst of speed and a nice pickup there on a second and two Derek watson comes up with 17 yards down to the msu 30 yard line don't forget folks you're watching Carolina football on SCE TV. And we welcome you to make a contribution to the South Carolina Educational Television Endowment by calling on the numbers you've seen on the screen below during our broadcast. Derek Watson there with a nice run. Great run by Watson. First and 10 now, Phil Petty. Sprints left after the play fake, rolling left. Cuts up the middle for a couple of yards. Let me tell you, that's one thing, Corey, after watching Phil Petty last year, I know that he's tough because he took some hits <laughs> during the year. He's not afraid to run the football. Well, you know, he's got to be smart, though, Todd. And you know this for yourself playing quarterback. you got to know when to hold it and know when to fold it. So uh, if he wants to stay healthy, you got to know when to take a dive. Back in the spread again. Trips to the right. Look, the safety blitz coming. The bus. Andrew Pennick back into the ball game now, rushes for one yard down to the 26-yard line, and all-conference player Donald Malloy makes the stop for New Mexico State. All right, a third and six. Here's the blitz again. Petty sitting in the pocket, throwing to the outside to Ryan oh. Brewer, and a flag on the play, what appears to be clearly pass interference there. You know that's the case when that defender gets up and runs away from the <laughs> from the camera view there. Well, I tell you, being a defensive player, Ty, when you beat and when you know that you clearly beat, it's better to tackle that guy yeah. and don't give up the touchdown. Give yourself the, a, a chance to live again, and uh, that's exactly what the defender did here from New Mexico State. Brewer had him beat on the play, so he just went ahead and grabbed him, which was a smart play. Yeah, good protection that time on the blitz by Carolina, and Phil Petty just overthrowing a Ryan Brewer who's tripped up. So we got a first and 10 now on the 11 yard line. Todd Ellis here along with Corey Miller and you're watching Carolina football on SCE TV. Hey, wish we'd have had this back when we were playing. <laughs> That's right. Of course, you and I would have wanted to play and do the broadcast. <laughs> the more you can do. <laughs> Up the middle to Pennick. Nice play by New Mexico State, stopping him, although Pennick's going to fall forward with that big body and <laughs> pick up a call yards. He gets four yards. Four yards. Second down and six now on the seven yard line. And this is where you've got to be very particular in your play calling. A difficult area. Do you have enough room to throw? You're too far to run in your jumbo set. Trips right. Phil Petty looks to the right. Throws a slant route to Brian Scott, but no, it is incomplete. Mm. Pretty good coverage, but I'm not sure he shouldn't have had that one. Great coverage and a great throw. I mean, uh, you know, Scott's got to make that catch. Uh, Fetty, Fetty has been pretty accurate tonight, Todd, I think, throwing the football. Really has been. No uh, quick feet in the backfield. We're going third down now. Slant route again, and it is batted down. 
Kane for New Mexico State bats that pass down. So in third and sixth, the Gamecocks cannot convert. We'll bring on Reed Bethay on a fourth and six to try a 24-yard field goal. Bethay stepping in, doing the place kicking, and it's up and good. Wow. So Reed Bethay getting some help there for his Gamecock football team. So a decent drive there. Carolina up 17 to nothing over New Mexico State. It stalls down inside the red zone a little bit, but field goal unit getting a little bit of work here. Well, that's much better than the previous uh, attempts to kicking the ball, and uh, you see Lou Holtz walks over to congratulate him. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, somebody made extra points. <laughs> He, uh, he definitely has 17 to nothing our score at Williams Bryce Stadium. Tony Samuel trying to find something for his Aggies to do right and get some kind of scoring before this first half ends. Of course, to kick off for the Gamecocks. Shannon Wadley, one of our fine linebackers there beside course, ready to go down and break up that protection. And a low line driver, but down to about the two-yard line where Winston takes it for New Mexico State. He cuts up the right side, and he is finally brought down. So Mexico State's going to return by New Mexico State. start this on about the 22-yard line. First and 10. Ensminger back to pass, throws to the outside, and... Can't quite connect with Winston. Well, I just think they weren't on the same page there. Yeah. Uh, you see that Hensley was thinking he's going to run more of the little uh, post-corner type of route, and uh, the receiver broke it off. Hensminger on that delayed pitch again to Barnes. Oh, Great and what a nice play. play. Great play. That's how you draw it up right there, folks. He avoids the tackler here, and I couldn't tell who it was. Let's see if we can get it on the replay. Take the dive, pitch it opposite way. Again, the linebacker here stays at home, makes a great tackle. Hold on to those ankles. Jonathan Martin for the Gamecocks there on the tackle. He's a converted running back. He's had leg problems and everything else, but no, everyone's always known. He's been a, a great athlete. Face mask there for the Gamecocks will push it up for New Mexico State. And Barnes comes back up the middle and makes two nice cuts for being stopped again by. I tell you, the Aggies keep trying to attack the middle of that Gamecock defense, and uh, they get having some success there, Ty. Yep. Hensminger back to pass across the middle again, but can't hit Winston on the crossing route. Hensminger was only a 45% completion quarterback from a year ago, but. Still had 14 touchdowns, only five interceptions. Just missing on that mark. Again, the Aggies run up the middle. Fakes the reverse and runs the dive up the middle. Trying to shake up those linebackers a little bit, give them this direction. But yes. Barnes only picks up one yard on that play. And it's down to the 37-yard line before being stopped by Andre Offing. Third and nine now. Backside blitz. Faison. Boy, that guy is a spark plug. And look at him come on this blitz from the outside. You see here, Charlie Strong comes from the blind side. Got a left-handed quarterback. So obviously you want to bring the blitz opposite so he cannot see it. And their quarterback doesn't see it. Faison gets the sack. Some guys just have a knack for that, Corey, from the secondary position. I tell you, you got to like Faison. He, he, he's played well last year and played well today. Andy Cole on the punt for... Mexico State as they couldn't convert obviously on that third and nine. Spazon gets the sack on Ensminger. A little bobble snap there, but he gets the punt off. It's going to take a New Mexico State roll. And a very good roll. Is that the real cocky or is that the <laughs> make believing? That's the man right there. <laughs> My kid's freak over him. I know. Here's Petty back on offense now to Derek Watson. Up the middle there with a little bit of a shake. This drive starts on the 24-yard line with 2.03 to go in the second quarter. And South Carolina gets a chance to try their two-minute offense here. Brings up another first and ten. Derek Watson again on the carry. Oh, nice slice through the opening hole there, and he goes out beyond the 40-yard line. 
rushes for. Well, I can tell you, Lou's been a little yards, conservative yeah. back because they backed up a little bit and they don't want to put Phil in, in a difficult situation so they run two draw plays. Phil Petty now scrambles, drops the football. He is a sack. He is sacked on the 39-yard line. It recovers his own fumble. He's being knocked out of his hand. Second down and 13. Trips to the right. Pennick in the backfield to the right. Petty out of the shotgun. Throws down the middle, but short. Ryan Scott unable to get on the mark so far tonight with them. A little seam route up the middle, but they could not connect. Well, Todd, he was pretty well covered on that play. So, uh, actually, Petty pretty lucky didn't get that ball picked off. Trips to the right, to the left this time. Phil Petty again on the snap. Pennick with the draw play. And I loss think, of three yards there. That's, I think that's the first time he lost yardage in this first half. And you can see the, the rain coming down at Gamecock Stadium. We have another punt here by Dean. who gets one off at least flat and straight this time. New Mexico State getting a chance again right before half to get back on offense. Punt was 44 yards. And Jenkins returns it 14 yards to the 34-yard line. Street ends tonight. Somebody was a prophet. <laughs> well, this play only starts with 13 seconds to go. Ensminger going down the side. Oh, and it's picked off. Kevin House making the pick over the top and returns the football down to about the 43-yard line. Intercepted by Kevin House. So the Gamecocks getting two picks on the night so far. Willie Alford and Kevin House. I think Ensminger had him here on the shallow post just overthrew him a little bit. Great interception. You've got to convert. I mean, we've seen so many times where Carolina players just drop those in the past, and it's all about getting those turnovers for your offense. All right, we'll see what the Gamecocks will do here. All about their will to win, Todd, tonight, getting that monkey off their back, and uh, Charlie Strong got to be very happy with the effort so far in the first half by his defense. Kevin House been in a battle all summer for that corner position. Phil Petty now just going down the field for a Hail Mary. And that is incomplete. And that will end our first half. The Gamecocks are up 17 to nothing. Stay tuned with us as next up we've got our halftime segment. The halftime show Saturday night paid tribute to the 1999 Gamecock champions. Eight Gamecock teams finished the year with a top 25 national ranking, with four of those teams ranking in the top 10. There were 32 All-Americans, 131 named to the SEC honor roll, and an average GPA from last spring marking the highest athletics GPA on record. Three of our athletes were named National Athlete of the Year. Outstanding track and field was once again the standard as the women's outdoor 4x400 meter relay consisting of Mickey Barber, Lisa Barber, Demetria Washington, and Ella Keisha Williamson won the NCAA championship with a school record shattering time of 328.64. Terrence Trammell won the 60 meter dash and the 60 meter hurdles at both the SEC and NCAA indoor championships. He also won the 110 meter hurdles at the SEC and NCAA outdoor championships. Mickey Barber won the women's indoor 400 meter at the SEC championship, setting an SEC record. She also won the 200 meter at the NCAA indoor championship. In outdoor competition, she won the 200 meter and the 400 meter SEC titles and the 400 meter NCAA championship. USC swimmer Zolt Gaspar won the SEC championship and the U.S. Senior National Championship in the 100 meter butterfly. For his accomplishments, he was named SEC Male Swimmer of the Year. The women's softball team came on strong as they won the SEC tournament. This was their second championship in the past four years. Our next team was the talk of the college baseball world. Finishing the year with a 56-10 and 10 record, they broke the previous USC mark of 51 victories. They were ranked number one in all the national polls for five weeks in a row and also broke SEC records for conference and consecutive victories. The SEC champion baseball team. This year, an amazing and outstanding accomplishment was achieved by three of our athletes. 
For the first time in school history, and only the second time in NCAA history, three athletes from the same university were named National Athlete of the Year in their respective groups. Sprinter Mickey Barber and hurdler Terrence Trammell established themselves as top women and men's collegiate track stars. Both will be joining 16 other USC athletes to compete in the Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia later this month. The third athlete was named SEC Player of the Year, as well as being named National Player of the Year by the College Coaches Association. He is pitcher Kip Balknight. Track coach Curtis Fry was named National Indoor and Outdoor Track Coach of the Year in 1999. Baseball coach Ray Tanner follows in his footsteps as he is named National Coach of the Year. With these outstanding athletes and coaches, Gamecock fans have a lot of exciting days ahead. Call 1-800-256-8535 and show your support for Carolina football coverage on ETV by making a contribution to the ETV Endowment of South Carolina. Again, call us. Make your pledge of support. 800-256-8535 in Columbia, 256-0222. And welcome back to Carolina football on SCETV. We have our first half statistics coming up in just a moment. But, Corey, if you're Coach Lou Holtz, you couldn't have drawn it up any better in the first half with the exception of maybe the kicking game. Well, the kicking game was probably the worst part of the first half, but Lou Holtz has to be happy and pleased, especially with his offense. You know, the running game of Pinnock and Watson, the short ball control by uh, Phil Petty, he's throwing the ball very accurately. The defense especially came up with two big turnovers in there in the first half, so that resulted in, in points. So if you lose hopes, you've got to be happy with the Gamecocks. And going in third quarter, I think, you know, if they can just keep going, they'll probably be successful. Already in the season opener, we've seen two things that we didn't see from the Gamecocks last year. Sustained drives in the first half. We had scoring drives of nine and 13 plays. 17, uh, 73 yards on both of those for scores, mm -hmm. and we've seen a defense that gets some picks. So, from that standpoint, you got to like everything you saw in the first half. Let's go to our statistics now. Here you have it: rushing yardage, 125 yards already by USC. I mean, that's more often than they got in most games <laughs> last year. You, that's a good change up. You got Pinnock, you hit him with the inside running game. Then you bring your switching point in there with Watson, hits him on the outside. Even though the passing yardage is not a lot of yards, but Phil Petty threw some great passes, especially to Kelly with that short passing game. So I think they have to be pleased with what they've done. Picked up some crucial third down plays on the short passing game, and that's what you want. Plus, you're protecting him. I think you sacked one time, and that was when the ball was knocked out of his right. hand, and really I think Phil could have normally uh, slipped away from that. Well, I think that's one of the reasons you go to the short passing game. When your offensive line is probably not as talented as you want, uh, you do that because you don't want five and seven step drops because that is, that's going to allow you to get more pressure on the quarterback. And so you go to the short passing game. And that spread offense helps you because Phil Petty is able to see those defenders coming, where right. they're coming from. Those right. defenders have to go out on those receivers in the slots and out to the wide. And if they're going to bring pressure, then Phil can see that easily. Right. And he's done a good job managing. You, as I said earlier, you know, they're not a very up-tempo type of uh, no huddle. It's very conservative. Get the plays from the sideline. I saw the quarterback, you know, sitting in the plays to Petty. He, he now sends it to guys, receivers to the offensive linemen. They go with the play, and uh, it's been very successful the first half. Very effective. All right, you've heard enough of the review of the first half. Let's go to our action now back at Williams Bryce Stadium for the second half of the Carolina Gamecocks versus New Mexico State Aggies. And South Carolina comes out of the locker room, leading 17-0, getting ready for our third quarter action at williams Bryce Stadium on a beautiful evening in Columbia, South Carolina. New Mexico State will kick off now to the Gamecocks. Cole to do the kicking duties as Derek Watson waits deep for the action, takes it out of the end zone. He's going to return it for a middle return. He's up the middle. He fumbles the football. New Mexico State on it. No. Now Jonathan Martin recovers the football for South Carolina. If New Mexico State recovers that football, you know, they get a score. They're right back in this ball Yeah, that's game. all it takes in the third quarter is one little break, and it gets some momentum back to them. But Jonathan Martin all over the football. Official signals Carolina football. Start first and ten now. South Carolina 29-yard line. Bill Petty's going all the way so far. They're getting things unfolded there, but sure enough, it will be a Carolina football. 
try to be South Carolina cheerleaders. Always do a great job. They're at lunch with Lou on Fridays that I do over at the fairgrounds, and they do a great job of hosting for that as well. Phil Petty now in the shotgun, sprints right, throws on the run to the outside to Carlos Spikes, and a nice completion on a timing route there to pick up a first down. Again, Gamecocks open up his third quarter tie with the spread offense. Rolling field out, gets the throw to uh, Spikes for 13 yards on the first down. Spikes, a guy who's had some injury problems that they expect him to big, be a big playmaker on, on offense. Betty rolling left now, throwing back right to Kelly. Kelly fumbles the football. Oh, oh you can see that Kelly is reeling up for that one. I can't believe the officials have tried to make that call. Look at the replay here. Going back to that sprint rollout screen play to the wide receiver, you can see 72. Page doesn't get out there and make the block, and uh, Kelly fumbles the football, but you can see there a late hit by the Aggies, but uh, no call. I mean, you've got a right as a defensive player to go after a loose ball, but once he had control of that, you well, think they might have called that. Well, you see Kelly is on the ground. I can tell you, a big, big guy fall on top of you. <laughs> doesn't feel too good. Does not feel good. Look at that, Louis said, I can't believe you didn't make that call. <laughs> he never misses an opportunity to preach his philosophy to those officials. Second down and uh, 11 now. 41 yard line, Phil barking out the signals. Moves Pennick to his left, trips to the left. It's like a blitz by New Mexico State, rolling left, Phil Petty. It's Ryan Brewer across the middle for a nice pickup there. They're again tied a short passing game. I tell you, it's been so effective tonight for the Gamecocks and, uh, you know, really allows Phil Pett to be very accurate with his throws. So tough to defend. You can't get to him, and you obviously can't shake up that quarterback. And Phil and Ryan both doing a nice job there of making adjustments off that blitz protect. Outside, crossing the 50 on a keeper of his own. He crosses the 30-yard line before he's drug down. And Phil Petty, how about that for a play action? <laughs> On the third and three, they fake the draw play inside, and Phil takes around the outside, and nope, you can see there. Looks like Phil's cramping up there. Let's look at the replay time. Again, fake draw play here to Pennick. That play's been successful all night. Now the defense thinks it's going to be a run, but guess what? Petty keeps it around the left end, gets a gain of 26 yards, but looks like he's going to cramp up here, Ty. Yeah. You don't get to uh, run 26 yards that often as a quarterback, even Phil with his 4-6 speed. Hadn't had that kind of open field in a long time, so he starts to cramp out on a human night in Columbia. So we look at Eric Kemry now as our backup quarterback. Right off the bat, he goes to Pennick on the draw play again. Kemry, a native of Irmo, South Carolina. He played for his father at Dutch Fork High School. Solid quarterback in that conference. Skip Holt says he... Knows this offense as good as anybody. Top him up. If I'm not mistaken, isn't the guy who they, they predict to be second string quarterback is hurt? Is that correct? Yeah, Dondrell Pinkins, one of the other fine young freshman quarterbacks that were brought in, has hurt his knee early in camp and expected to fight for that number two position. So we're looking at Eric Kembry now as our backup quarterback. Kembry's got the numbers though. I mean, this guy threw for 3,550 yards in high school. 40 touchdowns. That's in his senior year alone at Dutch Fork with Silver Foxes. He's getting them set up now, trying to get Ryan Brewer back to the other side. New Mexico State in a 4-3 defense. Not many players in the box there, Corey, is there when you got them all spread out like that? You got six guys, and uh, you know that's what's going to make that draw play successful. Pitch pattern out to the right side from Kemry to James Atkinson. Very nice play there. Quick release by Kemry. A nine-yard pickup there on a third and eight. That's converting. Again, still short passing game. You can see here in the next post state comes on the blitz. And you allow that big wide receiver action to get one-on-one -on -one with the cornerback there. Gets another game cock first down. First and ten on the 14-yard line. And Kemry's got a little drive going here after... Not even getting a warm-up toss on the <laughs> sideline. That's the worst thing about being the backup quarterback. This offense is like clockwork. I mean, I'm really liking it, Ty. Certainly executing a lot better than we did it last year at this time. Of course, we 
not playing uh, 16 different linemen at this point in the season. There's a blitz by New Mexico State. Kimry out to the outside to Corey Alexander. Oh, and it is intercepted, intercepted by Willis of New Mexico State. What a disappointing lay there for Kimry. He tried to loop it out there, but a little too much air on it. So A little too high, but, uh, you know, my philosophy is that receiver, you know, gets his hand on that football tie. He needs to catch it. So, yep. uh, not the best of throws, but uh, he needs to come up with that football. So that drive ends. And Eric Kemry had him on the move there. New Mexico State gets the turnover. It's 10:41 now to go in the third quarter. You're watching Carolina football on ETV. It's Todd Ellis along with Corey Miller. Encourage you make a contribution to South Carolina Educational Television Endowment to keep Carolina football on ETV. High back formation, option to the left side. Ensminger pitches out to the right, but he's covered up. Barnes is covered up. Nice pursuit there by the Aggies. The Aggies go on that, that triple high formation, and now they're going to begin to try to run that option play. And uh, Gamecock was in great position there. Todd just didn't make the play. Couple of bumps there on the back. I hate to see that. There's Kalimba Edwards. Kalimba Edwards. I wonder where his mom got that name from. <laughs> I don't know. But I wouldn't talk to him about it. He's only 6'5 and about 265. <laughs> no, I might be a little scared of myself. <laughs> I don't believe that. All right, here's Brand Streeter now on the dive play. Another big gaping hole up the middle for New Mexico State on a second and seven. Well, New Mex Mexico State really trying to attack the middle of that defense. And uh, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm kind of surprised being that the game has play. two uh, SEC candidate type tackles. Yeah, you see First Kenny Hardy sliding back in there now for Shannon Wadley. Both those are very capable inside linebackers now. First and ten. Here's Barnes, the outside. Now there's the Pinckney that we know. Cleveland Pinckney on the stop. And that's what should be every time. But I think Pinckney's been a little banged up, I think, with an ankle or something, so maybe he's not 100%. Tonight. Yeah, he and Cecil Caldwell as well. They see him slide inside here. Drops down, comes off the block, and makes a very nice play. Brings up a second down and nine for Tony Samuels. Who's a, of course, he and the, his complete staff were basically either played or coached at Nebraska. He's a 1977 graduate of there. Slot to the right. And up the middle there, we've got a... Short game by New Mexico State. Marcus I believe Dixon that's their backup fullback, the Marcus Dixon. By Three Lee. yards on that rush. Just going back to what you said about those guys even either played or coached at Nebraska, I tell you, uh, that's one guy, Tom Osborne, who uh, you wouldn't mind having some been tutor. He is uh, excellent coach, certainly a Hall of Fame coach. And unlike many of them, got out probably at the right time in his career. Yes, he did. Third and six now. Let's see what the Gamecocks come up with. Play action by Ensminger goes to the outside. And there's a flag on the play. Sheldon Brown, the cornerback for Carolina. Well, that was pretty obvious right there, Todd. He, he definitely shielded the receiver and uh, didn't allow him to, to make the catch. So uh, I think that's a good call by the officials. Such a fine line there as a defensive back when you fight them and try to get the position and then whether you're going to get caught doing so. Get I guess they're trying to figure out where they're going to spot the ball or, or where the penalty was called at. And the Zebras, it's their first game for them as well. <laughs> so they're a little rusty. Well, you can hear the booze in the background, Todd, but I'll tell you, that cause is justified. First and ten now for New Mexico Peggy State. first down at midfield. 50-yard line. Ensminger's gone all the way so far. Sends Winston in motion. It's a fake reverse draw play to Barnes up the middle again. Chris and Barnes they Barnes with the carry. click off a big amount of yardage as Chris Barnes picks up nine yards Columbia down at the South Carolina 41-yard line before Kalimba Edwards makes the tackle. I tell you, the game has got to be more solid up front, especially in that middle, uh, you know. When you play Georgia next week and, and all the other opponents in the SEC, they're going to definitely got to be more stiff up the middle. They go back to the middle. Marcus 
Dixon there not finding as Marcus much room Dixon as his cohort, carry. though. Only two yards on the play down to the South Carolina Andre nine yard line, but that is a first down. And Kenny Hardy combined to make the stop. This is a little more like it for Carolina. Kind of first a little down. better. You see linebacker gets in there, gets a piece of him, and, uh, and Hardy finishes him off along with Kalimba Edwards. And this is an offensive line for the Aggies, though, that you know is clicking at the 310-pound uh, mark, and it's by no means a small offensive line. They are very large. First and ten now. Fake reverse again, and Barnes is stuffed by Kalimba Chris Edwards. Barnes. Stop by Again, a two yards there. Kalimba Edwards again on another stop. And, uh, you know, in the first half, Ty, we didn't call his name too often. No, so, that's right. Uh, seemed like he's starting to heat up now. Well, they played the 3-5 defense quite a bit, probably for the, the option. He wasn't pass rushing as much. Now, Ensminger rolling out to his right, up across the 40-yard line, but Henry Ensminger. Hardy there. On the carry. There's a linebacker who was the leading tackler returning on this team. He shows some great speed here, Corey. Great speed and versatility here, Todd. You can see New Mexico State going with that cross boot again. Look at the closing speed by Horney. He closes him in, makes the tackle, and I tell you, you know, I talked about Clint Edwards, but we have called this guy Horney's name several times tonight, so uh, he's playing a, a well of a football game. And that's an athletic play that we didn't have two or three years ago at South Carolina. Faison again from the backside. Corner blitz. Rashad Faison. Second sack tonight by Rashad Faison. I tell you, again, Charlie Strong's doing a good job of calling plays. Blitzing from the backside of the left-hand quarterback, and it's been successful on so two attempts. On a third and seven, he stops in the Mexico State drive and pull on to punt for the Aggies. And whoa. That does not look like the uh, all-conference punter that he is. Yeah, I was going to say, did you say all-conference? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Is that Buddy Pugh on the sideline making that catch? Buddy Fair catches the ball on the sideline. <laughs> Third quarter, five minutes and 43 seconds to go. Carolina up still 17 to nothing. A great field position after the poor punt by Cole that was only nine yards. Went out of bounds on the South Carolina 37-yard line. Well, when you punt nine yards, uh, I don't think you're going to get too many votes for all conference play. <laughs> Tim Reed back in at quarterback. Phil Petty obviously not able to go. Trips to the right. Little we'll swing route to Ryan Brewer, and that is incomplete. And Eric Kemry not quite getting his hands all around that. It is tough to do now to get that shotgun snap, get the ball, get it, the laces right, and then still get it out there in a timing situation. And, and uh, especially for a quarterback who's only had a couple of snaps prior to getting this series going. Yeah, we're going to give Kimmer the benefit of the doubt. He's just warming up. Just warming up. And it's bad weather also. Yep, second and 10 now. You look at the field there, a little chopped up at Williams Bryce. We go back to Derek Watson, and Derek slips to the outside on the draw play. Picks up nine yards now before being taken down by Boganowski of New Mexico State. Well, just looking at the Gamecock offense, Todd, they're not running a lot of plays. They got about seven, eight plays, and they just, you know, run them to the left and to the right, mixing them up with some fakes here and there, but they've been successful. Jumbo here on second one. Derek Watson this time is not brought up short. First half, he was stopped on a similar situation, but they get it this time. And Squeaky as he's known to his teammates. It's three yards for the first down. I think on that plate, offensive line did a much better job of blocking those guys up front versus the third and or first and goal they had uh, in the first half. Spread offense again by the game clock start. Yeah, they just move them in and out. Those groupings are called from the sideline. A coach responsible to get the right group out there, and then they get the play in after that. Kimbrey in the shotgun. Derek Watson again. Nice spin move up the middle. He picks up, goes to the right side. Derek Watson on the run, goes towards the sideline. And an excellent run by Derek Watson. He's showing you there, Corey, why he is, he was Mr. Mr. Football. South Carolina football. They can see a great spin move. Look at him. Great vision. And I tell you, to be a great back in college, in the NFL, you got to have great vision. And you can see here, he has great vision along with great footwork, power. And I tell you, if he keeps his head on straight, Todd, this guy will play in the NFL. People don't realize how big Derek is. You know, he is a big back. He can carry easily that 225 pounds if he needs to do that. Plus, he's shown tonight he's got the speed. Yes, he does. 
Same play. Same play again. Derek Watson on the right side. Another spin move. <laughs> Derek getting his workout on this drive. That'll that will be four times now that he's rushed the football consecutively. Picked up 36 yards on those four plays. If he keeps making all those spin moves, he's going to be dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's the reason they bring in Ryan Brewer now to sub Watson. Same set, trips to the left. Looks like a blitz by New Mexico State. Brewer, nice little cut to avoid the sack up the middle. And Ryan Brewer, who is Mr. Versatile for South Carolina, he does everything. Plays in the slot, plays on the outside, plays running back. It's nice to have a tough guy like that that you can move around. You can give him the football at receiver and or running back. You can see here, good move. And has good leg drive, good power, gets to pick up a six yard. So uh, a great run there by uh, Brewer. So nice for a coaching staff to have a player like him where you can just punch him in anywhere into the, the game plan. All right, first and 10 now on the 21 yard line for Kimry. Fake to Brewer this time. Kimry rolls out to his left, throws down the field under pressure, and Corey Alexander makes a nice catch and then stays on his feet for another yard as they get it down to about the three yard line. First down for Gamecocks. Inside the We've seen this line. all night, Todd. Faking the draw play, sprint out pass. Hits receiver downfield. A little wobbly type of a duck pass, but he gets, <laughs> he gets it there. You know, they never read that way in the record. That's right. Right. <laughs> it's just a completion. That kind of reminds me of Dave Brown. I'll tell you, he's never thrown a spar on his <laughs> life. <laughs> Jumbo now as Kemry rolls out to the right side. Nice block there. I believe that was Cedric Williams there on the cut down block, but it's still an incompletion to Travis Lewis. Now there's a story, converted defensive lineman moves to fullback, and he's had some crushing blocks tonight for Derek Watson and Andrew Pennick. Couldn't quite get his hands on that one though. Well, he got a little pressure there, and I think uh, he should have thrown the ball early. I think he was open there for a split second, but uh, Kimmy head on to the football. All right, now second down and goal on the New Mexico State three yard line. Pennick in the backfield. Lewis up front, Pennick gets, he fumbles the football, picks it back up and scores. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Andrew Pennick with the delivery. Well, I think Pennick must have prayed before the game and did his devotional this morning because <laughs> I was with him right there. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking is, is that all those bad breaks that Carolina got last year, we deserve a couple of good that things to happen to us. That is true. I'm uh, Buddy Pugh, the running backs coach. <laughs> Buddy Santa, listen, hold on to the football. <laughs> you can't afford too many of those. Yeah, look at Coach Fitch, too, as well. Everybody having a word or two with Penny. <laughs> Reed Bethay on now to try the extra point. And it's good. That's a nine-play, 63-yard drive as we take a look at Pennick again. Look at how it just bounced right back up in his hands. See there, it was a clean handoff by Cameron. Yep. Pennick just dropped the football and uh, very fortunate to get that ball back. Took three minutes and 19 seconds off the clock. and Another nice drive, especially with your backup quarterback in there. Force with a deep kick into the end zone. Boy, we hadn't seen that at Carolina in a long time. Not since I kicked uh, against Florida State, Tyler, with the big square toe shoe. <laughs> <laughs> you actually did that, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the glory days. All right, so they'll start it here as they can furrow you. After the ball was dead, Hustle Five, Mississippi Yeah, Hutchinson here is called with a personal foul after that nice kickoff, and that just... Well, Todd, Byron I can tell Coach you, Holtz. that will get him a visit to the one and only Coach Lou Holtz, I'm sure. <laughs> well, you don't get a kickoff that's a touchback and then go out there and commit a personal foul after that. You'll do it any time, but certainly under those circumstances. Gamecock fans, so loyal. Rain and all. Rain, sleet, snow, they're going to be here. Well, they were sensing victory. Nobody's leaving at this point. 35-yard line for New Mexico State. Blitz by Carolina, and Ensminger feels it. He has to take it, it looks to be, just for a quarterback sneak. Two yards there on the game, but that's not, I don't think, what they called in the huddle. No, Gamecocks definitely brought the heat that time, straight up the middle. I think that's because they've been having some success there early in the ball game. There's a five-man front, but something's amiss here as they start this play. Weaver's going to be illegal procedure. 
So a second down and eight on the 37. He'll back that one up. So New Mexico State will look at a second and 13 on the 32-yard line. Carolina football on SCETV. Keep it here as far as making a donation to the ETV endowment. Ensminger brings his team up to the line of scrimmage, eye formation. Play action, drops back to pass. He's hit and it's fumbled. Langston Moore, Andre offing on the pickup. Oh my, we got a defensive touchdown, Corey. I tell you, the defense is doing it all tonight. Two picks in the first half, now they come up two sacks by Faison, another sack here with a fumble and a touchdown. Langston Moore with the big hit as Ensminger is trying to deliver. The ball pops out and offing from Houston, Texas. Picks the ball up for his first touchdown of his career. That's the first defensive touchdown since 1997 by a pretty good free safety named Arturo Freeman. Arturo Had a pick for an interception. Read the fake and Burt's on that. Charlie Strong has to be very pleased with his defense. I'm telling you, they are making it all happen tonight. And, uh, you know, all these guys are playing very well. Well, they have brought pressure when they wanted to. They've laid back and played the 3-5, and it's been effective. And uh, nothing like a defensive touchdown to keep your team going. Course with a kickoff here. Down to about the goal line. Decent return again by New Mexico State. Walter Taylor on that return brings it up to the 31-yard line. Jamie Scott on the tackle for the Gamecocks. So they'll start first and 10. 31 to nothing. Option down the right side by Ensminger. Cannot pitch it. Fumble again. But Ensminger recovers his own fumble as Dennis Quinn makes the hit, and they continue to play the option well. This is not something I don't think that the coaches of New Mexico State expected, Carolina. So they go to a split back now. Slot to the left side. Ensminger drops back. Trying to set up the screen play. There'll be none of that. <laughs> Kenny Horney again. We keep calling his name, Todd. He's been all around that football all night. And for an inside linebacker, that's what you want. Well, screen probably the most underutilized play in college football. But that's the reason why at times is you got a good linebacker who sniffs it out then stops it for nothing. I'll tell you, if this defense continues to play like this, Todd, throughout the year, you know, the Gamecocks definitely will have a chance. Again, the split backfield. Ensminger under center. Quick drop. Nope. Quarterback draw by Ensminger. Picks up seven yards now. A stop by Rashad Faison. It's on a third and 14 there trying the quarterback sneak. And that's the end of our third quarter, and Carolina leads 31 to nothing. There's the yardage starting to pile up. 312 yards now for USC. And close still on the time of possession. We hope you're enjoying the coverage of Carolina football on South Carolina ETV. If you are, make a call and show your support. 800-256-8535. Make a pledge to the South Carolina ETV Endowment for continuation of South Carolina football coverage on ETV. We'll start the fourth quarter now. So on a fourth and seven, Mexico State electing to punt in their territory. And oh, it is blocked. It is blocked. Carolina gets a piece of that football. I think it was Teddy Crawford. Teddy, who's come a long way at the receiver position this fall camp. Well, that's a bright thing for the Gamecock special teams, uh, you know, being that the kicking was kind of bad early in the football game, and now they come up with the punt block. And, uh, but I think for New Mexico State, what do we say? The walls are beginning to crumble. Yes, they are. That'll be a long flight back to Las Cruces, New Mexico. Mikhail Goodman now, new quarterback in for the Gamecocks. First and ten. Hand off to Pennick over to the right side. Pennick picks up a couple of here. Goodman in at quarterback now. He's a 
sophomore, 200-pounder, appeared in seven games for the Gamecocks last season. He was 32 of 65 for 527 yards and three touchdowns, just one interception. They like the way he handled the ball last year, but he's had an up and down fall campaign, which has allowed Kimry and Dondrell Pinkins, as you pointed out early, Corey, all have moved ahead of him at this point. Yeah, I've had a chance to speak with him. Oh, in the practice football the is dropped. Day. That is a fumble by Goodman. Goodman just drops the football there as he's dropping back the pass, and it is. It's a turnover. New Mexico State gets the, gets the football. Well, plays like that, Ty, would definitely uh, get you pushed further and further down the tap chart. And uh, just Goodman, unfortunate there, he dropped the ball. Well, first play for New Mexico State, and it's an ugly one as they try the option again. And yes, who? Carolina is all over it. How about Kenny Harney, I think? Kenny Harney is all over over the football. He is sniffing it out. Davis looks a little shook up there for them. Let's take another look at this play. You see here, they're trying to run the option now. Gets the pressure, and guess who? Ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Horney again. That is so difficult, as you know, Corey, because you got to have somebody on the quarterback, somebody on the pitch man, and that time Carolina played it perfectly. They did. They played it well all night long, Ty. Winston in motion towards the line of scrimmage, and Barnes with a draw play up the middle. I can tell you that, and I keep, I know this is kind of overabundant here, but uh, the Gamecocks going to have to play better if anywhere on defense up the middle. They got to be more solid. As you know, everybody's going to watch this film and try to attack that area. As Ensminger tries to get to the outside on a keeper, he rushes for six yards there to the South Carolina 38 for Kalimba Edwards makes the stop. That's a on a third and 11 play, though. Not enough. It's not going to get it done, and they will not take the chance down 31-0 of trying to go for the score. A great shot of williams Price Stadium and our Mike Gal this year. <laughs> Cocky. Mike Gal. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got here? I believe that's going to be a delay of the game penalty on New Mexico State. See Charlie Strong on the sidelines said, back him up, back him up. <laughs> Coach Strong, he's coached a few good defensive players in his day, formerly at Notre Dame and at Florida, put together some great packages for those coaches, and now got his opportunity to call his own defenses here at Carolina for Coach Lou Holtz. Cole now already set to punt. Gamecock set up for the return, clearly. He gets this one away. Ryan Brewer's going to let it go. Down to the, oh, and a great play by New Mexico State. He bats the ball back into play, and Davis recovers that. That's a wonderful play. Now I guess we can move the Aggies punter back up to maybe a potential <laughs> all-conference player. <laughs> helped his average a lot there. Yeah, that helped. So Goodman got his series, and now Eric Kimmery back into the ball game. He holds not liking what he sees. You're into your fourth quarter here now. 11 minutes and 37 seconds to go. You're watching Carolina football on South Carolina ETV. Watson out of the eye formation, tries to get to the outside on the Thomas Hill block, and he does so. Gain of three yards there by Watson. Again, they run the stretch play this time. Trying to get on the corner of that defense, and uh, New Mexico State plays it fairly well. Gain of three yards, and uh, they'll line up and go at it again. Today's day and age where you got the quick hitting offenses, that's a stretch play out of the eye. It takes a long time to develop. Emory now rolling left. Shuffle pass underneath to Watson, who's got some room to the outside. He's across the 30, and he's down well into New Mexico State's territory and a beautifully executed play by Watson and Eric Kimry. Great call there by Skip Holtz, again going with the shuffle pass. Uh, you can see here in the replay. Again, that spread offense. Shuffle it to Watson. Great blocking tie by the offensive line that allows him to get on that corner. And you can see there Watson doing what he does best. Running the football. Boy, that's so much harder than most people know to execute that play. New quarterback now, Rod Wilson, into the game. Freshman for Carolina. Stepped in after Kimmery got the 36-yard completion. That's a nice time to slide out of the ball game. Rod Wilson from Cross, South Carolina. Todd, may I ask you on a map, where is Cross, South Carolina? <laughs> I know I'm from Pageland, South Carolina. But where in the world is Cross? Well, Cross is so small that there's a population of 358, and that includes livestock and flying insects. 
But let me tell you something. This is as good as it gets out of Cross because he is a fantastic athlete. Oh, fumbled the football. Rod Wilson fumbled on the play on his second play. Well, after getting a couple nice rushes there, he fumbles the ball and got to learn to protect that. They strip it a little bit harder at the college level than they do in high school. <laughs> That's correct. So New Mexico State will take over now. Ten minutes and two seconds to go in the fourth quarter. They'll start on the... 50-yard line. Ensminger still going for the Aggies. For all play to Barnes. Still fighting a little bit, but Pinkney that time fighting off the block and filling up that hole. But they're still getting a lot of push on us. More that push, and I think Charlie Strong would want up that middle when you got two all-SEC candidates, you know, and Pinkney and Caldwell. So you would think it'd be a little more solid there. But, uh, you know, again, those guys are kind of banged up with injuries. Been subbed a lot tonight by Stamper and Langston Moore have done a good job. And it's a little bit of a convenience we hadn't had in the past. Ensminger now out of the eye formation again, this time to Barnes up the middle. And <coughs> he is shut down. There's Cocky again. What, the, what do you call that girl, Todd? She's the Mike Gal. We usually have a Mike man. She's the Mike Gal this year. The Mike Gal. She gets everybody excited over there in that. Well, I've been around section. a long time, so I don't. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have those in NFL games. <laughs> Third and two now. They go to the dive play, and it is stopped. That will not pick it up. Willie Alford there from his strong safety position. Doing a nice job there on a third and two. Just like we saw Carolina get hit with it. The safety stepping up in there to make a stop right at the line of scrimmage. Speaking of Willie Alford, I tell you, he's had a pretty good football game tonight himself. What a he, great, great athlete, Corey. He is, but he's kind of one of what they call a tweener, Todd. Yeah. He's a safety linebacker type, and I think they use him somewhat of, of a bandit, so they bless him a lot and, and uh, cover some backs and tight ends out the backfield. Yep. Fourth and two for New Mexico State, and they're not going to get it. Chris Barnes rushes for one yard. Dennis Quinn on the stop there, so that drive only lasted four plays. Picked up nine yards and two minutes and seven seconds off the clock, so looks like Rod Wilson will get his sh second shot at this. Well, Rod was a Shrine Bowl player. He's going to run it again up the middle. Looked like a little confusion there. He's a captain for South Carolina. He rushed for 10 TDs and threw for 14, but he ran the wing T in high school. A little bit different than what we've got out here, and although not all that different. Kind of sat there in that back position not what we're seeing right now exactly sat back there and ran with one or two backs he's an exceptional athlete they liked him a lot along with Dondrell Pinkins well they're, they're starting to begin to get some good players in here and uh, I think once Lou begin to mold these guys they're gonna end up being a good football team out of the spread in the shotgun Wilson gonna run again goes to the left side Picks up a couple of yards. Now I'm starting to wonder whether South Carolina gave him the rest of the playbook. <laughs> <laughs> well, only one play he's ran so far, and that's been the quarterback draw. So I think Lou just kind of playing to save here just to run out the clock and get this thing over with. Yeah, get his young quarterback comfortable as well. Plus, it's been successful. <laughs> you can't complain at that. That's correct. Rod well, picking up three yards on that play. Pinnock in the backfield with him. Rod letting his teammates know what's going on. He's going to pass this time. Slides out to the right. He is hit, and I believe that's going to be an incompletion. His arm was moving forward. It was. So a third and six, Carolina cannot convert. Rod Wilson will. <laughs> well, Ty, I don't think uh, Rod Wilson is going to be too happy with his first collegiate debut here. I tell you, he's had a tough time. Well, I can assure you. My first ball game was against Miami, and things move a lot quicker at this <laughs> level than they do in high school. It does. And, uh, but you're going to have plenty of games ahead for you, Mr. Wilson, so hang in there. Yep. Tyler Dean on the punt now. And he gets a good one off. Backfield a little bit better. Drives him to the sideline, and great coverage that time. That's how you cover a punt right there. Brian Elam on the... Elam from the gunner position. And I tell you, that's, that's a tough position to play. Boy, they beat you to death out there, don't they? <laughs> they really do. So New Mexico State will take over now. First and 10 on their 10-yard line after a very nice punt by Tyler Dean. Tyler had a 42-yard average last year. 
Well, this particular situation, they really didn't block the gunner, so uh, <laughs> I think New Mexico State is kind of waving the flag right now. Yeah. They're really giving up. It's tougher and tougher to do those little things when you're 31 points down. Yes. 6.17 to go in the fourth quarter at williams Bryce Stadium. And a new quarterback for New Mexico State, Damian Ocampo, a sophomore at 5'10", 190 pounds. Gives off to Marcus Dixon there. Three yards up to the 13-yard line. Campo battled the another backup, Tony Howard, with that position in fall practice. And Walter Taylor now taking it up the middle as the Aggies, I don't think, want to give up another touchdown here this deep in the territory. Well, I think they're basically just trying to run out the clock as well. So, you know, we came in here, we tried, and uh, let's get this thing over, go on the plane, and head back to New Mexico. Third and six now. Swing pass out to the right side. Nice play there, cut by Taylor. Excuse me, that's Jenkins on the play. He slides out there to pick up the first down. Nice execution by Ocampo. Got the ball out of there in a hurry, which is important on that little swing route. Now they go back to the ground here. Walter Taylor finding the room out there. Rushes for eight yards up to the 30-yard line before Kenny Horney brings them down. Well, you can see, Ty, both teams now have probably primarily their backups in the ball game, trying to get some of the young guys to get some experience. And, uh, you know, and it's a lot of quality time for some guys. You know, get in there, get, get the feet wet, and uh, learn how to play some college football. You can point out those fundamentals on just a couple of plays on, on film. 29-yard line for New Mexico State. Play action, drops back, throws out to the right side, left side to Dixon there, and it's incomplete. Marcus Dixon don't look like he's run too many routes in his day. He's a pretty, pretty big fellow there. Yeah. <laughs> Used to blocking. Third and two. Like a blitz from the outside by Carolina. And a draw play by Taylor. He's got an opening there. Walter Taylor picks up nine yards there. Nice. Nice play by New Mexico State. Keep the drive alive. First and ten. Caught on the blitz there. There's that misdirection pitch again. Gamecock's a little more prepared for it this time. It's, it's tough on that strong safety having to come up there, and he's fighting off a block and to try to make that play in the backfield. Yep, good pursuit by the Gamecock defense, and uh, what's important on that, that play is that linebacker and that safety staying at home and not getting fooled by that uh, fullback dive going away from him. Campo in the power eye here. This is what we're used to seeing this out of Nebraska, but he throws out of it as he rolls left. Got some good feet. He's running hard. Pushed out of bounds there. Frankie McCullum, along with Kenny Horney on that play, but Campo is showing some athletic ability here. Campo got great speed. And uh, I tell you, that resembles a lot of those uh, Nebraska quarterbacks, Todd. Man, I tell you what, I saw them in the Orange Bowl against Tennessee a couple of years ago, and they were manhandling the balls. Not too many teams do that. Winston in motion. Reverse play to Winston around the right side. He's going to pick up a couple, and then till a Kevin House there with a nice tackle. Open Kevin House better be careful there. He's about to get a flag. Well, they've ran that dive along with the fake all night, but this time, you see here, they fake the dive to the fullback. This time, they give it off to the receiver, Winston Brown, for the reverse, and good pickup here. What a great tackle here by Kevin House, and uh, he got a little extra push in there as he's getting up. <laughs> Boy, you can sense it now. The Gamecock faithful getting around that... Uh Goal post there towards the end. Holding on that play. So that'll be 10 yards now to the 50-yard line for New Mexico State. First and 12. Again, those Gamecock cheerleaders posing for the camera. Seemed like that would be a fun job, but 
one that I wouldn't want to have, I think, Tom. Let me tell you something. They, they work hard. See them, they're just as much in two a days as football team is. Power act, power eye backfield. Ocampo, play action. Looks like a play that might have gotten messed up, but he rolls out left, and it's incomplete as Monroe breaks that pass up. Well, that's a Gamecock fan in the stands. Here's Winston now in motion. Oh, my. Oh, what a hit. <laughs> Goodness. Shannon Wadley says there'll be no game on that play. <laughs> Smack him up, flip him, and put him down. <laughs> Look oh, at this play the replay. Goodness. You can see here, he shoots right up the gap on a blitz. <laughs> wow! Now, that's what you call knock out your shoes. That had to hurt his mother. There they are. Now you can sense the tide that's in the air. That monkey is about to get off somebody's back. I mean, you think about it, Corey, and we've got sophomores who enrolled at Carolina who haven't seen a victory yet from the Gamecocks. Campo going back to pass, going deep down the right side. Oh, and there's a flag on the play. Interference. So Kevin House on the first kind of deep ball to the outside by New Mexico State picks up the flag on that play. Well, I don't understand why Kevin House grabbed him there. I mean, that ball is completely overthrown, so. Yeah, Lou Holtz is arguing that on the sideline as well. It's an uncatchable like, pass. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> and that's bad as well. That defense is played. Lou Holtz is still shouting, and uh, that tells you his, his desire and his, his competitiveness for the game of football. Well, I can tell you a lot of things about Coach Holtz, but there's one thing's for sure. He does not miss an opportunity to coach. Is every situation, whether it's positive or negative, he's telling someone how they should react the next time with regards to that. So, so reset everything on first and ten. Ocampo back to pass again, down to the right side. And that's going to be incomplete as it's overthrown to Talbert. Well, look at these fans. I tell you, it's been two years since they sensed the victory or smelled the victory, and I tell you, it's been a long time coming. Somebody told me the other day that if they had known that Ball State would be the last win, they'd have celebrated a little bit harder in that ball game. <laughs> it's been a long time coming as you stated. Oh, there oh, it is. Oh, watch out, Louie. <laughs> There's the cold bath on Coach Holtz. <laughs> Look at that. I don't think I've seen him jump that high ever, <laughs> even when he's mad. They're sensing it now. Swing pass out to the right side to Winston. He's going to be wrapped up, though, just inside the 20-yard line. <laughs> you and Lou over there going, who did that? Who did that? <laughs> yeah, somebody might have to run some stairs for that. Uh-oh. And there it is. You have it. It's our final tonight. From williams Bryce Stadium, the streak is over with, and the fans rush the field. And that's right. It's, it's get not ugly. over. I remember Coach Holtz coming out at that point. He's breaking them up. There's still 36 seconds to go in this ball game. Even I jumped the gun on this, and I watched <laughs> the game Saturday night. Well, I can tell you, it's, it's easy to do when you see all those fans down there celebrating. Yeah, they're piled up in the end zone there, so Coach Holtz had to move them back off the field. A little bit more time left on the clock. Nine, four, 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 one. One. They'll get their opportunity, though. Fourth and one. Gamecocks crowd the line of scrimmage. Motion by New Mexico State. And he's wrapped up. There'll be none Ooh. of that. Now it's time to celebrate. Langston Moore on a great hit there by Bostic. That's cocky. <laughs> Watch for falling goalpost. Got he, the sign up. He predicted that correctly. 19 seconds to go. Well, Todd, I had left the game at this point and uh, kind of settled back to my RV because I knew it was going to get crazy. Well, they did that. There's cheers all along on the sidelines. But uh, they know they've got it at this point. Charlie Strong congratulating Coach Holtz. Lounsbury there as well. Josh Rogers in the game for a couple snaps here. Hands off to Eccles. Nice to see some guy. There's Tim Bell fighting. Continuing to fight there from the guard <laughs> position. And that's the end off. of it. 21 straight games without a victory until tonight. Gamecocks win. This ball game, 31 to nothing as the crowd gathers around that field. And Coach Lou Holtz heads for some safe area there. Well, I tell you, you know, 
I know they're excited, but you got to always be careful when uh, that goalpost is coming down.